Hello, everyone. This is Tony Lawson, CEO and co-founder of Shop Black. Today, I'm joined by Mr. Daryl Addison, the founder of Torpedo Pots. How are you, Daryl? How do you do, Tony? It's nice to meet you. Likewise, likewise. So, Torpedo Pot, tell us about your business and your, your background also, if you don't mind. Sure. My background is mainly science and chemistry. Um, I have degrees in pharmacy, chemistry, uh, physics, and um, uh, mainly I've written a couple of books on cloud computing. Um, and uh, so I'm pretty much, you know, spread out uh, in terms of my uh, professional career. Um, background is that I own this company, Torpedo Pot, which I'm the founder, I'm the inventor, um, the CEO, however you want to put it. And um, it's, it's a phenomenal company. We make uh, planters where that people can actually drop their seeds into a container and it grows their food for them with no human intervention. Something that's never been seen before in the world. So that's what we're doing with the, the main company, Torpedo Pot. So this is a set it and forget it type of product for people who aren't used to taking care of plants or growing food on their own? I like the way you said it, because when I described it, it sounded like a little device that will grow your food for you. That's true. Mm -hmm. But we have bigger planters that are for agribusiness. For mm -hmm. instance, right now in under two square feet, we're growing a thousand green peppers unattended. We can set up this in somebody's small business and have them grow 10,000 peppers and literally flood the market with a cheaper uh, substitute than what's being offered right now. Wow. So explain how the product works. Like you drop, you have a pot and you drop some seeds in it. Mm. What is it about the product that makes it grow, I guess, so, so, many, so many fruits or vegetables and so fast? What is it about that? Do, and I know people were like, oh, what's the answer, Daryl? But the first thing we have to do is take a look at our psychology. Mm. And I know it seems that's not intuitive to look at your psychology for a product. But our behavior is that, remember, everyone in the world is gardening with the same tools that Jesus did. And if you go further back, the Egyptians did. And if you go further back, we, tell me, we got things that go to the moon, we got cars and drive. And we, when we walk outside, the first thing we taught and the first thing we touch is a shovel, a trowel, and a spade. That's not sustainable anymore. <laughs> that's not a way to grow food <laughs> it's crazy so yeah torpedo pot it uh it simplifies that when uh, you don't have to look back at those tools and to answer your question i hope i'm, I'm answering your question Tony. i don't want to go too much on yeah, yeah. just rephrase it one more time so i can make sure i answer the right way so basically i'm trying to figure out what is the mechanism or how do you drop a seed in this pot and it just grows faster and more uh, fruitful or productive than a regular potted, a regular so, pot in some soil. Forgive me actually to, to say it again because I wanted to hear that again. <laughs> but the, the funny thing about it is that, see, when everybody goes to their, their plants, the first thing they take a look at is it green. Right. And they say green means health. But you know, Suppose I was able to put a chemical in the plant to turn it green, you wouldn't even know if it's healthy or not. So we take a different approach. So a pedal pot, if you have a pile of dirt, that matter is being changed over in a simplicity in another form of matter, a, a plant that you can eat and it's edible. So you have something converting one form of matter over to a living organism, another living organism. Right. The question is, what's doing that? Is it fertilizers? No, it's not. It's the soil. Mm -hmm. There are things within the soil that grow our food, that prepare our food. There are things within the soil that remediate and clear up the soil. And we do that. Part of that is using the, the biotic environment in the soil, using fungus to grow your food. And we realize that when we do it that way, not only can it grow it automatically, but you can do it with no human intervention and requires little to no water. Water does, water is not, water is critical, but water does not grow plants. Hmm. Imagine if you had a plant of water for the rest of his life, unless it were like a lily or a seaweed or something of that nature, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but water does not grow plants. Yeah, we've got a couple of dead plants at the house here that'll testify to that. 
<laughs> well, you just want out of, so remember now, our planners can be used inside and outside. So why am I walking around my office and I can't eat my, I, when I walk around my office, huh? You said, I didn't hear the last part. You yeah, can't, I, I, I can't imagine walking around the office and not being able to eat my plants. Mm. I mean, why would I want to grow something that I like if I'm having lunch and you know us, our schedule and so many of your viewers, they eat lunch on the fly. And so what better it is to grab an herb or something out of your pot that's healthy and nutritious, you know, and to use it and just have it growing there in, in your house. It just makes so, so much sense to me. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's, that's so different than what we're used to. That's like you said, it's a change of mindset, right? That's interesting. Mm. So what issues would you say, because what the issues that come to mind, there's food scarcity, there's land scarcity. Um, what other issues would you say this product could solve on a commercial basis? And um, I guess any other basis? The commercials will come to well, mind. Well, imagine this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and thank you, because applications of the product when we answer your question because obviously if it's not applicable it's not not usable just imagine farmers having acres of food that go out they have breath they have depth to it you know there's a dimension associated with that sure um but with torpedo pot we go up so yeah. i don't care how much you go out when you go up <laughs> so that's why we can grow up but up Huh? Yeah, there's nowhere said, to me, go but up. There's nowhere to go but up. <laughs> and I did that, but we do it more economic. So in a small square foot footprint, mm -hmm. we're able to go up high and create millions of pounds of food. Now, when I go and I do my tractor and I'm, I'm doing the field, plowing the field and all this other stuff, that costs fuel. Right. Matter of fact, the greatest contributors to um, land abuse is fertilizers. The greatest contributes to health is fertilizers. To air is fertilizers. You know, and so it contributes to our water. It pollutes our water and everything else. So having not to use fertilizers, use a fungal approach, eliminates the debt right there, right off the bat. Sure. You do it in a smaller space, it's debt. You can modularize it and go as high, as low as you want. So there's so many features. It uses 95% less water. So if I'm growing a thousand green peppers, I'm using, wasting maybe a cup or two of water a day. I can adjust my water system to only give my plants what they need and give them more and watch them take off or give them less to control their growth. So there's so many benefits to the consumer. The consumer no longer has to uh, have their food shipped from California and they pay a premium of, uh, like for instance, a box of peppers may cost you uh, eight pounds of peppers. Organic peppers cost you like $47 dollars maybe in California or $36 in California. Buying it here to your home where you can make it and have it available to yourself but you can experiment with new forms of peppers, new genetic breeds. You can actually do that on your own and do things you never did before. Right, right, right. Especially right. for medical uses like cannabis, you did it also. Yeah. So speak to that a little bit because we talked about um, farming. So this, the cannabis industry is huge, multi-billion-dollar industry. Um, I'm assuming these, the your pots work with your pots work the same for pot. Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact. And I always tell my clients that to Peter Pot, we're not in the business to grow plants mm -hmm. because that means we would have to get a pot for every particular type of plant. And that's why we don't grow plants. We grow fungus. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you're edible plants or they're putable flowers. The earth's ability to produce food has decreased over the last years. We believe that Africa has contracted its ability to show vigor within the soil by 8%, as much as 8%. In just 100 years. Wow. We're reversing a trend that the earth has been doing so well. We're reversing that trend and going in a negative direction. What's causing the reverse in that trend? Do you, do you, you know what? And I'm glad, man, I'm so glad you hit on the right questions. One of the things that's so obvious to us is our clothing. The yeah. synthetics we wear, all of the hairs are going into the streams and the waters. All the pollution we have is killing all the fish. All of the air that we breathe is coming in and things are hitting the soil and it's destroying the surface of everything. Hmm. And so we have to look at how we do business and so Peter Pot is one way to curb our appetite. I mean, we're actually eating more food in less space. 
less water, less resources. So as a means to curb the destruction we're doing, and we can actually turn the direction that we're going into to reduce our carbon footprint in less than 70 years. That's how powerful this application is. Yeah, and I can see that happening just because of the reduction in water that's being used as well, right? Yeah, you nailed it. You nailed it perfectly. And now people connect, in Minneapolis, we're looking at building, I put in a specification for building a building. Mm. You have an outlet that you plug a, a light switch into your house, and that outlet is 120 or 220, whatever you're doing. We have outlets now that you plug into the wall for every room, and you can have your whole house full of food, and you'll have to go no place else. Wow. So this is the direction that we're moving into, and mm -hmm. nobody else has this technology because we patented it, we founded it, and we're showing the world that we can jump off strong to do whatever we want to do. Nobody's in our way. So that being said, what interest have you received um, regarding, the, uh, the, regarding the product so far? Like from who? And if you're able to say, I don't know. But... No, I think I'm able to say it. I would say this that we launched this new product in May of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I will send you results. Claude Anderson and Boyce Watkins has this on their tr program. Secretary of Commerce is getting his own line of planners. We've talked to Jamaica, we talked to Ghana, we've been to officials in Ghana, we've been to a number. So, and my customers, my loyal customers, who I, I love and I'm dedicated to, uh, they did nothing but buy the planners over and over and over again. Once you get hooked on this planner, you'll never turn back. Right. Uh, my customers are buying, uh, I, I don't care what color they are. I have my wife friends that are buying 20 to 30 pots. They're redoing the whole landscape. I mean, who wants to do all that work when you can have everything automated? Right. And all of my, my, my brothers and my sisters, they're buying huge amounts of pots also because they're preparing for not just the food shortages, but the quality of food. We don't want our quality of life to decrease. We want to retain or increase our quality of life. And Tokido Pot does that. That's great. That's amazing. So where do you see the product in five years from now? Where do you see the business in five years from now? Because I know you have a few verticals. You have Torpedo yeah. Pot and you have a couple of others. Do you mind speaking about those as well? So we can get a, a bigger picture of what your plan is. Yes, we have um, um, about five verticals that we're looking at right now. And they are all powerful, powerful verticals. And what makes them so powerful is that they all have the underlying technology of microbial growth and biotic growth in order to feed the plants. And that's why whatever plant you get will have its true colors, its true flavors. Those who are growing cannabis can have their true flavors. So because they're getting a seed from one location, they can, they can put it in another location. They can, if they add fertilizers to it, it'll take off and grow. They don't understand growth. They're moving the fungus from one location to another location. It's the fungus that causes the flavors, the colors, and everything else. So that is our underlying principle to Torpedo Pot. And we have another company called Cannabot. We sent our planners to a cannabis grower in Pennsylvania. And as you can see on the website, on the homepage, and um, they brought the planners back and they said, Daryl, we've never seen anything like this. It grew into a big bush. And that point we realized we had a, a, um, a, a um, manufacturer in Florida uh, reach to us to see if we can reduce the operations and we put it in a bid for $10 million. And that is before, that was like maybe about 10 months ago. Now that we've launched our product, some of our products, we can better address that situation. But with that being said, we have Canapod and we have Haas Plant. It's the world's first hospital for plants. I don't care what plant you put in the Haas Plant. It gives you all the controls. As a matter of fact, the Haas Plant takes total control, unlike the Torpedo Pot. Everything has built-in sensors and circuits inside pot. It measures the pH and it measures the humidity. It measures the amount of, uh, of, of water that's actually in the soil. It measures all the dryness and it adjusts to that environment to give your plants what they need. And that's what Hospital Plant is, the first hospital for plants. Why, why is that important? For our professional growers. They need to be able to tailor the environment because the earth is no longer capable of doing it. They can't reproduce the good work they do in the laboratories in the field because it can't be reproduced anywhere because everything's contaminated. So having a container that will allow you to move this around to do what you want to do, that will go from nurseries. When you buy your nursery, you'll have it in a, 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 a hospital or a tobacco pot. You carry it home, plug it up, that's all you do. Very easy. Guaranteed that 90% of the plants that are dying out there, 
99% of the plants that are dying out there and never experienced their full life cycle, we'll see it in the hospital. And the last one is agricultural blockchain. We want to take all of this cannabis and food and everything that people are growing, and we want to build a bridge around the world so that you can conduct trade and commerce on across this blockchain for various agricultural products. We're pushing it across Africa because they need their own private network. They need their own private exchange because right now they cannot exchange it without uh, 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 developing goods that are costly and selling them for pennies and dollars in the marketplace. So we want to eliminate that and create a fair ground for everybody to mm -hmm. exchange their goods because of this growing technology. It will be popular. It, it's the new standard. And so we're hoping that when people come on board, they'll see it and government officials will come on board and they'll see it also. So what I see or envision is in food deserts, there are going to be like food gardens or spaces where plants can grow, but they'd have like a bunch of torpedo pots there with thriving plants going up to the sky, growing all types of fruits and vegetables for cities that don't have access to supermarkets. Um, food deserts and also individuals are able to like let's say I don't know you have an extra room in your house or your apartment or in your basement you have a bunch of pots there and you're growing whatever fruits and vegetables you like as well so like indoor farms outdoor farms or a mixture of both okay. yeah I think you nailed it and that's what it is when we speak about going green this is the only product in the world that allows us to go green that the consumer can buy mm. And it's affordable. I mean, a pots are, we're looking at from 25 to $40. The planters themselves are even cheaper than planters that are being sold in the marketplace with none of this technology. Wow. So we want to make it affordable because we promised ourselves and we promised to us, the creator, that we'll have a solution that everyone can eat. We can't leave anybody out of the equation. Sure. And that's what we're doing torpedo pot in our companies. We're allowing everyone to invest, whether it be crowdfunding or investments. We want them to throw it into Torpedo Pot because now we have a company that has a product that can meet everybody's needs. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we want to monetize this company and let everybody take a part of this company and to grow it together. So this is not being grown by a CEO the American way. It's still capitalistic. I love the idea, but it allows everyone to participate and we all grow together and make a profit together. That's, our, that's what our goal is. That's great. Um, another question that I had was, uh, it actually just escaped me, I apologize. Well, your oh, questions are so good, it's throwing me off my game. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, it was actually around, okay, so you're taking care of the manufacturing or the production part. Did you have any thoughts or plans around now processing these fruits and vegetables and packaging and then going into the wholesale or retail arena? You know, I did a spill with the Urban League last, uh, about a month ago. And the Urban League, I won like $500 in small contests, and which I'm very grateful for. And thank you for the Urban League for sponsoring it. But what I meant by that, $500 that we are using to put into businesses in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. We have a gentleman who's opening up a torpedo pot and he'll be selling, he'll be our distributor in Philadelphia. Okay. And so I wanted to do a photo out with the Urban League and ourselves and letting people know that their money is not going to waste. Uh, I got a call from a VP, one of the banks, and I got a call also from another individual, and they said, Daryl, we're interested in what you were doing. I said, well, this is what I want to do. I want to partner with you in the church. They said, but Daryl, we just gave Herbaly $500 to help you. I said, well, this is what I'm going to do. We have a solution now where we can drop ship tanks, pumps, line systems, get everything set up. So we have these inner city growers immediately start growing. Mm. Now, I don't, those who are interested in, I don't want to feel intimidated because most farmers don't know anything about agronomy. About what? Most farmers, they aren't, most farmers don't know much about agronomy. Okay. They work with soil, but they don't know much about the, uh, they may know a little bit about how they're biopsy of the soil, but they've been taught an agricultural perspective. So mm. they really don't know, they're not growing the stuff themselves, they're making additives and fertilizers and growing within this time frame and having this much water. And all of this controls the environment. So we tell our clients, same thing with us, same thing with us. We're going to give you all the tools that you need to succeed because at the end of the day, you're not running a farm, you're running a business. Right. 
and we want you to go into business with us when you make that investment. So the woman who came to us and the churches who came to us, we want them to invest in businesses within their community in which they were owned because they may not have enough to be able to finance it to complete this. Well, that's amazing. So in wrapping up, where do you see the business in five years? What's your five-year plan? What do you envision? I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm a creator. I lay the groundwork. I build. I build the framework for everything else. Mm -hmm. The business is only as good as its components. And that's what we're empowering people to achieve their goals. We live in a climate right now where most of the businesses have been knocked out of business. Most of the products are similar and the same. And it's hard to create new sources of revenue. But at times like this, that's where capitalism makes its debut. Those who have and have those ideas need to come to the forefront and make it happen. That's where we shine most as Americans. That's what we always do, and that's what we continue to do. No, oh, that's perfect. Thank you so much, Daryl, for sharing your story. And I definitely plan on keeping in touch with you and seeing you know, more success from the company. Thank you very much. All right, you have a great day, sir. We'll talk soon. Okay, thank you.